There's more to listen up than what you see on TV. Check out our website. You'll find blogs to comment on, questions to answer, a poll to take, and clips to watch. Pay us a visit and answer our viewer question of this week. Do you plan to give overseas and why? Write to us at listenup at listenuptv.com. Listen Up is back looking at our action plan for how we can make a difference against modern day slavery. I'm shocked where today's slaves are trapped. We're continuing our look at one dimension of that crisis, children for sale. We take you back to Cambodia where pastors are determined to stop the crisis, even if it means posing to be a pedophile. We warn you that this broadcast is not suitable for young children. This is footage of brothel busting, taken by the Christian Agency International Justice Mission. It's an evil you can't imagine to go in a place like that. Reverend Don Brewster was approached by IJM and a Cambodian pastor to help in the sting operation. This pastor needed Westerners because the place was so big and he wasn't getting any, any uh, respect. Or, so he, he said he was a guide uh, for Westerners. And, and then you posed as a pedophile. Yeah, and we went in, and it is so ugly. I mean, I can't really, I haven't processed it fully. I, it's hard for me to talk about it, what you see going on, but it is, it is such an organized crime. The price for a girl, $5 an hour for petting, $100 for sex. Don estimated the huge volume of traffic he saw had brought in $60,000 for the brothel owner in just one day. Imagine you walk into a room and this man tells you you can do whatever you want to the girls and then he parades over a hundred girls in front of you, young girls. We would estimate that 80% were under uh, 16 years of age. So here's this little girl who is thinking, I think they have conflicting, I think the conflicting thoughts. I think they're thinking, oh my God, please don't pick me. I don't want to be raped again. And I think there's part of them that says, oh my God, if he doesn't pick me, who am I and how can I get money for my family? So this former Californian pastor has been drawn into their plight. He runs Agape Restoration Center. 52 rescued girls are kept here in this highly guarded, peaceful location, which we cannot tour you through. We actually have pastors uh, who have now been aware of what's going on and have been given some training about what to do that are actually working as undercover pastors that go into brothels and karaoke bars and provide the information to NGOs and the police. And, and in the last six months, they've been rescued 10 girls. Don works closely with Cambodian pastors and IJM on the referrals to safety. I believe that the key to, to, the, to this problem is the church. The church here in Cambodia, and actually the church outside of the, of the country. But the church within the country of Cambodia has the ability to change this. Back at New Hope's little school-based church, this pastor agrees. I have uh, children and I know that they are the gift from God. We will do everything in our power to uh, protect them and we uh, want to teach them about God so that they can uh, follow us to serve God. And by the end of the church service, Dune and Min had worked with missionary Kim to evacuate three children in danger. With their legal paperwork done, I rode along as Kim drove them into the network of care available to workers in Phnom Penh like Ruth Elliott. Ruth, do people sell their children because of the poverty? With all the families that I've ever worked with here in nearly five years of working in Cambodia, what I see is that the families that sell their children are greedy. They, they want the money, but they don't work. The parents refuse to work in most of these cases. They, they, they don't want to work and they often they have gambling habits so the, the, the child will the child's earnings will be supporting other families gambling habits and alcoholism it's very very prevalent so the, the kinds of families that sell the children among all the, the families I've ever worked with the greedy they want a TV they want some jewelry they 
they have gambling habits to support and they have alcoholism and the parents don't want to work. They feel it's their right to um, live off the children. Ruth is a Cambridge University trained psychologist who couldn't get her teenage idealism out of her mind. A hope that one day she'd be using her career to rescue people from the sexual slave trade. She's now created Daughters, a Cambodian employment program for girls who want to leave the sex trade. Without alternative income, they have no other choice because their families demand the income. And that's why they're in the brothel. They don't want to be in the brothel. They don't choose to be in the brothel, but their families have um, put them there and their families take the money and the girl will stay there because it's, it's a cultural expectation that children support parents. So, but they don't want to be there. And so given the opportunity, they leave. The opportunity here is about learning skills in cake making, needlework, and creating hip t-shirts and bags. Ruth searches for North American markets to purchase the products so these girls stay employed. When Listen Up returns, how one girl destined for the sex trade became a beautiful model of hope to her students at risk. That story, coming up. Closed captioning provided by Duca Financial Services Credit Union. Discover more affordable banking at duca.com. There's more to listen up than what you see on TV. Check us out at the web and this week answer our poll question. Who gets the blame for children in the sex trade? There's a multiple choice just for you at listenuptv.com. 